Hello and welcome to the group room where we're at the 34th annual CTRC AACR San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium. I'm very happy to be joined now by Dr. Professor Robert Hyatt, who is the Director of Population Sciences and Associate Director of the Helen Diller Family Comprehensive Cancer Center, and he is Professor and Chair of the Department of Epidemiology and Biostatistics at the University of California, San Francisco. Thank Welcome. You. Thank you. And you're being talked a lot about here at the San Antonio meeting because of your very important work involving breast cancer and the environment, which was done through the Institute of Medicine. And uh, truly, many of the physicians we're interviewing have commented on your work, and that's what I would like to focus on with you today. Happy to talk about it. But it's not me, it's the committee, the IOM committee, that we will be channeling. So let's talk about uh, why this is such an important uh, piece of work and the impact it's going to have on our country and the, what we understand as far as risk factors and the environment. There's a broad overall conclusion, and that was that we didn't know enough about um, industrial chemicals, and in particular, endocrine disrupting chemicals which act like hormones and um, can have effects on hormone synthesis and metabolism that um, uh, we thought were important. Um, and we thought maybe the problem was the focus of research so far, at least in human populations, has been on adult, adult women. Now you really can't expect an adult woman to remember what kind of exposures she had when she was a child or, or earlier in her life, yet we feel there's evidence that there were uh, or there are um, um, factors which influence breast cancer development and other sorts of development that are established early in life, maybe even in utero. So one of the things the report stresses is the need to look at environmental exposures early in life. As a matter of fact, along the life course. And that's why the title is Breast Cancer in the Environment, a Life Course Approach. So we think that the way forward is to uh, measure exposures to environmental factors at, in windows of susceptibility during the life course. Windows of susceptibility are times, periods of times that open and shut um, in utero, prepubertally, during puberty, um, age at first pregnancy, lactation, and menopause. All of these times are, are, are periods when the breast is changing and uh, potentially more susceptible to um, environmental um, agents uh, of a putative nature. I want to frame what we learned uh, in that context. So we're, we're saying the way, to, the way to find out more is to, to look at the life course approach and that's a, that's a strong message. Then as to what we can say now, uh, we have um, you know, identified a number of different factors. One is uh, medical uh, uh, ionizing radiation. We know ionizing radiation, as distinct from non-ionizing radiation, and I can clarify that if you wish, uh, is a carcinogen. We know this from um, the experience with the Japanese atomic bombs. We know this from the experience with um, medical radiation for tuberculosis uh, treatment early in the century when doses were much higher. Um, and the concern now is that there seems to be a lot more medical use of uh, ionizing radiation for things like CT scans and other procedures, which may not be uh, appropriate. And if it can be cut down, it would be a good thing in terms of overall risk, because it's cumulative exposure, which is important. We know that uh, combined hormone therapy, progestin and estrogen that have been used by women postmenopausally is a, um, a carcinogen. Is the word combined the important word here? Yes, so it actually may be that estrogen alone is not, um, for instance, a, a carcinogen or a carcinogen promoting substance, but the combination uh, is, and we know this from the Women's Health Initiative. We know that alcohol, uh, even in small doses, can be that can contribute to a slightly increased risk. It's, it's a clear fact. It's not a huge risk, but it's there. We know that uh, exposure to active smoking now is um, established. We know that uh, um, increased weight 
uh, is a risk factor for postmenopausal women. And we know, on the other hand, that the physical activity uh, can be protective. These are the things we know. And then we identified a number of uh, circumstances or, or conditions or agents which we think are plausible, and they're plausible based on incomplete evidence. So uh, bisphenol A or BPA is one that uh, is on a lot of people's minds these days. There is an uh, increasing amount of evidence that this substance can act like a hormone and affect um, uh, animal uh, models in terms of early development. Um, and um, there's some very clear developing biology that has to do with epigenetics um, that uh, my colleague Cheryl Walker just uh, presented today that um, it makes it uh, biologically plausible. But there's virtually no human evidence um, that it has an effect. So we were not able to raise that to the bar that we had set for strong human evidence uh, to make it an established risk factor. Also, light at night, which is a phrase that uh, reflects sh sort of shift work, uh, is been, has been linked to breast cancer work. So this is something like nurses or service workers might be exposed to. We're really not sure why. We're not sure about the mechanism there, but there have been eight or so large epidemiologic studies that have shown an increased risk consistently uh, with breast cancer. So it may be something to do with melatonin, a uh, pineal hormone that's sensitive to light and has effects on hormones that could be the factor, but we don't know. So that fits in the biologic plausibility category. We found that there needs to be a, uh, a more of a focus on early life and life, of course, approaches. And we, uh, in identifying specific chemicals and specific substances, we're able to categorize them into levels of risk. So tell me, when a study like this uh, comes out of the Institutes of Medicine, IOM, what happens now? What is the what do they do with this, and how does this impact society? Yeah, that's a very good question. So uh, this, I think I have a pretty good answer for that. It, 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 uh, the IOM is not a funding agency, and they don't have uh, the authority to change policy. But as you probably know, the IOM is part of the National Academy of Science, which was founded uh, under Abraham Lincoln's presidency uh, to provide um, independent, authoritative uh, information to Congress originally on matters of science. And uh, over the years, it's developed so that uh, other agencies can use the IOM for the same purpose, so the Coleman Foundation for the Cure. Um, so what you get from the IOM is a uh, expert group uh, knowledgeable in the area, selected very carefully, uh, who meet confidentially um, uh, without influence from outside uh, opinion, um, free to say whatever they feel is necessary to get at the science, and they, re they report a, a very heavily edited and reviewed um, report. And the members of the committee are uh, sworn to secrecy for the rest of their days about what goes on in these committees. And that remarkably has been maintained. I mean, you, you don't find members um, talking out of school. So it, it's an important part of the process. Now what does happen is that the IOM reports, because they're backed up by this process, are seen as highly authoritative. And agencies like the NIH, the CDC, the FDA, legislators, foundations pay attention to them. And um, frequently policies will be made or funding decisions will be made based on the IOM report. So I fully expect that the Coleman Foundation for the Cure will take this information as where we are now and what we need to do next and use it for their own decision making. See, I take this in a very empowering and, uh, empowering and positive way for people to begin to have a greater sense of control and responsibility in their lives. You may not be able to avoid easily certain environmental risk factors, but if you are conscious, you can try to make choices, and in that way, 
be more engaged in how you live your life and why you make the choices you make. I think that's certainly true. Um, but I would add to that uh, in a sense. So let's talk about stakeholders. So one stakeholder is the individual who is empowered, as you describe. Another stakeholder are those that are interested in not themselves particularly, but in changing things at a policy level. So these are uh, perhaps advocates, perhaps um, uh, health policy individuals that take this information and use it to change regulatory or reimbursement issues. Another stakeholder would be the funders. And they take the information to make judgments about where to put their dollars for new research. Well, in closing, <coughs> what is your hope out of this uh, work, this body of work? I hope that it will be used to uh, refocus the um, search for environmental factors that influence breast cancer in a more sophisticated, sophisticated way, in two ways. I hope that it will uh, help us focus on the life course and where environmental chemicals and substances which could be carcinogenic act um, and that the appreciation that the matter is complex and interactive be incorporated into our thinking. We're no longer looking for one chemical or one cause or even one type of breast cancer outcome. Unfortunately it's gotten more complicated. It's not impossible to solve, it's just more difficult and I hope that we have a, a refocused way to do that. Well thank you Dr. Hyatt. I, I've had the pleasure of meeting you before and I know you've spent your entire professional life really dedicated to looking at these kinds of issues and trying to understand how we can live our lives in a better and, and healthier way. Professor Robert Hyatt, you are the professor and chair of the Department of Epidemiology and Biostatistics and the Director of Population Sciences and Associate Director of the Helen Diller Family Comprehensive Cancer Center, the University of California, San Francisco.